Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us shout for joy to the rock of us. 
salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the be with you and with thy spirit let us pray almighty god you have given your only son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life through jesus christ your son our lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you, a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry, and go up to my father, and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the, lord, in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me. And you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have, I will provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly together from Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when, when brethren, brethren live, live together, together in unity. unity. It, it is, is like fine oil, oil upon, upon the head, head that, that runs, runs down, down upon, upon the beard, beard upon, upon the beard of Aaron, Aaron and runs, runs down, down upon, upon the, the collar, collar of his, of his robe. robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls, falls upon, upon the hills, hills of Zion. Zion. For, For there, there the, the Lord has ordained, ordained the blessing, life forevermore. 
A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. I ask you then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish and her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is one of the few times when we cringe at what Jesus has to say. The problem starts as Jesus and his disciples are heading toward Tyre and Sidon. Now we're not told if Jesus has performed any miracles in this Gentile land, but we do know that his mission is to seek out the lost sheep of Israel. But he is doing so heading into a Gentile land. And today in this gospel, we see that at least one of the people of that land, an unclean person of Canaan, has recognized Jesus. Recognized him not just as a rabbi or a prophet of Israel, but as the promised Messiah. 
The problem in this gospel is that this person who seems to know immediately who Jesus is, is the wrong religion, the wrong social class, and a woman to boot. So naturally, the disciples would like to send her away. Because it is a rather unimportant woman of Canaan who is following Jesus and the disciples and shouting out for Jesus to cure her ailing daughter of a demon, calling out to him, no less, as the son of David, a phrase that was used almost exclusively to describe and talk about the long-awaited Messiah of Israel. Now, the Canaanites did not believe in a Messiah, but especially not one descended from David's line. But the woman of Canaan hails Jesus by this messianic title, and she calls him Lord, begging him for mercy the way a king's subject begs for a favor. And then she kneels before him in an astounding display of homage and faith. Now, she's not the first to kneel in front of Jesus. The Magi have that honor, having knelt by his side some time after he was born. But the Gospels show us over and over again that kneeling before Jesus is often a precursor to miraculous healing. A leper also knelt in front of Jesus to be healed, and a ruler did the same, asking for his daughter's health. And now we have this woman of Canaan kneeling in front of Jesus and asking for her daughter to be healed. Now, you may be wondering how it is possible that this woman, this heathen woman, no less, has more insight into who Jesus really is than it seems like the disciples do sometimes. Because, face it, she was a total outsider, part of a people who were considered to be enemies, longtime enemies of Israel. And she was female, so just speaking to Jesus and the disciples was considered unclean and, and uncool. But this time, the woman and her people are, are, are meeting Jesus on the road, and she represents a change, a transformation that is about to happen. And it's also important to note the scripture that we started with in this gospel, where Jesus has just finished telling the disciples that he is reframing the boundaries of clean and unclean. Jesus is transforming the notion of what is good and what is evil, what is clean and unclean. Perhaps this is in response to the Pharisees and the, and the scribes, because Jesus explains that compassion and mercy are now the lens that they should use to judge. And Jesus declares that it is what comes out of the mouth that proceeds from the heart, and that is what determines what, what makes a person clean. And what comes out of the Canaanite woman's heart right after Jesus has spoken these words is faith certainty that Jesus has power enough to heal, power enough to save her non-Israelite daughter. And her words demonstrate that the boundary that separates her from the house of Israel must be reconsidered. And in fact, this encounter with the Canaanite woman prepares us for Jesus' great commission to go into the world and make disciples of all nations. And this woman reminds God's church now that we also are sent into the world to enter new places and break down the boundaries that separate us from one another and from the love and the will of God. So, back to our story. Jesus ignores the woman's pleas initially, which is surprising to us, right? That's the first time we think something's up here. But then when pressed, he claims that his work is more than enough to deal with, just serving the lost sheep of Israel, clearly implying that she is not one of these sheep. And that is when we hear Jesus say the words that feel so cruel, that sound so unchristlike. He says not only that he won't give the woman her request, but he likens her status to that of a dog, a dog not fed from the table. Now, the woman, as women often are in the New Testament, is quick and smart. And she accepts what Jesus has to say and responds that as a dog in the master's household, she is willing to be fed from the crumbs. And that is enough. I suspect that Jesus is delighted by her answer and probably anticipating it. I have always believed that this 
unchristlike dialogue was actually Jesus teaching the disciples an object lesson. Because here we have this Canaanite woman offering words straight from her heart that are so faith-filled that she cannot be seen as anything but clean and worthy at a seat at God's table. And furthermore, she has placed her hope in just the crumbs that fall from that table, on those crumbs that others have discarded, which may be a jab, right, at the Pharisees and the scribes who've been offered a place at the table of, of God's feast but have refused to dine. So this one woman, an outsider, declares that even a crumb from God's banquet has the power to defeat demons, to unite disparate people, and change the world. And this is why Jesus praises her faith, because she has realized that when Jesus says he has come to the lost sheep of Israel, he is not setting boundaries. He is breaking them down. He is not saying that those who are not already in the flock are abandoned. Instead, he is opening up the sheepfold. He's breaking down the fences and inviting all sheep who answer to his voice to come and be recognized as his, to be recognized as part of his flock and God's. And all will be fed. Amen. And now let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has has spoken spoken through the prophets. prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
The gift of forgiveness surpasses our understanding. It heals relationships and mends our wounds. In thanksgiving for God's unfailing love, we offer our prayers responding, Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the nations may maintain justice that leads to peace and harmony that leads to abundant life for all people, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the humility to receive God's blessing and the willingness to be a blessing to others, especially those who are lost and afraid, ill and without hope for recovery, mentally fragile and without friends, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For teachers preparing for an uncertain school year, that they may be inspired and protected to patiently nurture their students and the minds of those in their charge. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be a people of gratitude, giving thanks to God with our whole heart and soul and mind. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may not succumb to the harmful temptations of our world, the desire to possess things beyond our need, our misuse of intimacy, our reliance on drugs and alcohol to improve our lives, our destructions of the earth, and all things that keep us from trusting the power of the Spirit, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may set our sight on the new life that awaits all who live in hope, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead who have died in the faith of Christ may inherit the kingdom prepared for them, and that those whose faith is unknown to God alone may receive divine mercy, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And now we bring before God our prayerful intentions for St. John's Church and all church members, for those who worship here now and in the past, for those who come here to learn and to work and in anticipation of those who will soon join us in this vibrant faith community. We bring before God our commitment to work toward an end of racism and discrimination against any of God's beloved, and to ask that God will bless our efforts and protect those who stand against the systems of oppression. We bring before God the healing needs of those who are sick or in any need of prayer, especially Helen, Susan, Rusty, Alan, Chris, Nina, Ken, Nancy, Sharon, Michael, Megan, Brandon, Carrie, Kat, John, Robert, Renee, Celeste, Diane, Susan, Judy, Dawn, Lisa, Joe, Lauren, Diana, 
Stella, John, Andy, Gail, Phil, Lorraine, Mercia, Alex, Ron, Nora, Tracy, Kalanji, Bob, V, Tony, Mother Vicky, Richard, Ryan, Bella, Carol, Wendy, Mike, Jan, Jean, and Jerry, and all those that we offer to you now. We call to mind our reasons to be thankful as we remember our abundance and the life-giving way of gratitude. And we offer thanks for all those celebrating birthdays this month, especially Jessica, Valerie, Stephanie, Laura, Susan, Sal, Ruth, William, Robert, Donald, Delphine, Joseph, Charles, Joseph, Gregory, Jane, Jennifer, Kevin, Connie, Lori, Eric, Christine, Heidi, Harley, Richard, and Jacqueline. And we give thanks for those celebrating anniversaries, especially Susan and Rob, Mina and Edward, Barbara and Edward. And we give thanks for the departed, remembering Vincent, Angela, Maurice, Steve, Mary, Calvin, Maud, Gladys, Hilda, Paul, Michael, Frank, Kit, Gustav, Amelia, Helen, Rose, and Levine, that all may have a place in God's kingdom. And we offer all these prayers and praises through Jesus Christ, our only strength and advocate. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now we pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. You can find out more about St. John's on our website at www.stjohnstuckahoe.com and you can support us financially there as well. And as we head into this next week, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those that you love this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.